Jace. Yes. All right, what do we have here? So we got the HG10 cooling bracket, right? This one's specifically made for the 290 and the 290X. But you can see here that it allows you to mount any of our Hydro Series coolers onto it. All right, I got a quick question for you. You said it's made specifically for that one. How many different versions are there? Are there ones for like, the, you know, NVIDIA cards, AMD cards, what do we got? That's right, that's right. So this one specifically, like I said, 290, 290X, right? Uh, we also are gonna have one for NVIDIA, it's 770, 780, Titan, and then we're gonna keep on refreshing it as it releases new cards. All right, so how does this work as far as the um, the cooling goes? What, what are you cooling here? Okay, so literally, right, we have this bracket that makes full contact with the Still VRAM. Camera. Oh yeah, here you go. I don't care, you should full, full, Yeah, exactly, here you go, hey, hey, hey look at this. So you can see that the VRMs and the VRAMs are fully made contact onto the bracket. We also reuse the stock blower right here, so that way it also gives it some nice airflow. And then the GPU obviously is cooled by the Hydro Series, you know, H75, H110, whatever. What if someone has a custom cooled uh, 290X? Will they be able to use this? Because it still has the hole for the custom blower, or is it mainly for people who have the stock unit? That's true, it's really the stock unit, right? Reference design only, and of course, it's just, we want to make it simple as possible and with this bracket you're able to do so. Nice, now do you guys have one of these that we can actually check out? Oh wait a second, before, we, I'm noticing you've got all kinds of yes. holes here. You guys can mount AMD or, you know, with, with Intel mounts? That's, that's right, so any any of our, like I said, any of the Hydro Series will work fine, but you can also use the Intel or AMD mounts. So I prefer the AMD just so that way the hoses have a little bit more room to, you know, mount, and of course, you want to make sure you're SLI compatible. So, well, if you're like me, I, I always lose my brackets. So I've, there's, <laughs> it's nice because there'll be probably an AMD or an Intel left in, in the box somewhere. Yeah, you got the AMD sitting around. No one uses the AMD one, so it's just that's <laughs> awful. That's, uh, our audience, I'm so sad about what he said about AMD. I'm so sad about this. We're totally biased. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're just totally biased. Oh, you're fired. <laughs> All right, so you can see here we're running Wolfenstein with the HG10 looped up on an H75 that's on the 450D. So you can see right now that obviously the core clock speed's steady, right? It's pacing up and down right now. We're just standing still. But one of the crucial things is that the temperature, right, is 47 degrees C. The VRMs, both temps are cool, just nice, right? However, if we go over to our other system, of course, it's going to get up to the 92 degrees centigrade. It's it's warm, it's loud, the fan blower's going. Now, is this overclocked at all, or is it just you're nope. doing a stock-to-stock -stock comparison? This is so. stock-to-stock. All right, let me see the other temps over here. This is, the, this, is the, this is the stock here. That's right. All right, in the stock, we can see... So we look over here. 92 degrees right there. Yeah, look at that. Just Freaking an inferno in your system. <laughs> That's right, and you can see that the, the clock, once again, is drooping up and down and the VRM temps are significantly higher as well. Yeah, the VRM temps are important. That's something that a lot of people forget, is the, you know, the VRMs yeah. and, and the VRM. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're drawing so much power to those cards and the VRM's gotta take it, so you gotta make sure that it's cool. Awesome, man. Well, Jace, thanks for showing us this. When is this gonna be available? So August. We're playing for August and 40 bucks. Get in line now at your local thing. That's right. This is the RGB keyboard. So you got K70 RGB, yep. which will be uh, in July, and they'll be available in Cherry MX Reds, and then August, we'll make it available in Blues and Browns. Uh, K95 RGB will be shipping in Blues, Browns, and Reds in August. So that's no longer a secret, you guys have the K95? We have the K95 with the 18 programmable G keys, double macroing now, which allows you to do two macros on one key, so 180 combinations within the three banks on the uh, K95 RGB. I'm also seeing some mice here. We have the uh, what, M65 now in KGB as well? Yes. RGB KGB. <laughs> yeah, you <know>. yeah. <laughs> This is the uh, new Russian uh, M65. All right, for the... So we have the M65 in RGB as well. And we're not, we don't have military green anymore, so maybe that's throwing you mm. off. But okay, yes, uh, M65 RGB, some notable improvements is three zone backlighting. The logo is now backlit, the DPI, can uh, set it to five DPI levels and assign it to backlighting. And then the headlight underneath the scroll wheel um, has lighting as well. Um, the white one is now two-toned with white on top, uh, black on the sides. And then the sniper button positioning, that was one of the major things I wanted to switch um, and uh, improve on was we moved the sniper button back a half an inch to make it easier to reach for most people. So you guys didn't just um, you know add some carnival show yeah, effects yeah. to this, you actually changed some of the, we some changed, of the core so we re, design. Yeah, we retooled uh, the design of, you know, we had to retool the uh, um, the sniper button to yep. move back half an inch. And then also um, on the previous gen, it was silver aluminum, and now we've gone black aluminum, of course, to match the look of, of the line of the K70s and now the RGB keyboards. That's pretty awesome. All right, so um, th these have, uh, you know, been in the works for a long time. Yes. 
and every time we talk something's changed so what has changed now so i mean right now we are pretty much locked in because you know we're going to go in mass production any day now so on uh this is a um a lighting pattern that i programmed myself and what i did was i took uh, the background lighting and made it uh, completely yellow with wasd and arrow keys and green and then i added uh, additional layers of wave and ripple lighting so you'll see that there's uh, a red ripple going uh, from the middle to outside so in the software you can control the velocity and the duration of that ripple and then how many keys uh, the ripple goes how many colors so that that's another layer of lighting and then there's also a wave lighting which is the blue um, which goes from the middle and out and then I program that blue and you can control the um, the speed and duration but also the directional of the wave so if you wanted to have it go left to right right to left up to down or even diagonal across the keyboard you'll have the flexibility within the software to control that backlighting um, everything in here is individually programmed 16.8 million colors including the brightness the windows lock and then all of the uh, multimedia keys um, have rgb um, leds under under them so this one takes about five to 10 minutes to program but as you um, do multiple layers of lighting you could spend you know hours in there to really customize what you want to do because you can uh, you can play with the speeds and the adjustments to really make cool lighting patterns can you show us um, I guess the keyboard reacting to typing and that yes. sort of thing so a, an, a, even an additional layer is the reactive typing so as you press a key this one is particularly set up for white so it will ripple out from every key you press um, with white backlighting and then you know you can see if you really want to overwhelm it you can see it just you can turn the keyboard completely to white and that's all that's all programmable with any color you want and even multiple colors so you can have it uh, wave uh, rainbows you can even set it to black or no color to give it a nice contrast on the uh, the ripple effect. This would be good for uh, you know reaching everybody out there because some people are going to want a million colors, but some yeah. are just going to want a color that you normally yeah. cannot get and just leave it on. Yeah, I mean we've already seen people that talk about how they want to match it with a particular cooler, um, you know, uh, you know, an ASUS uh, ROG motherboard. So they want a red scheme with you know just uh, you know static lighting with WASD and and white arrow keys in white, and then the rest of the keyboard in red. So. Just uh, whatever you want to do, the software is going to give you that capability. If the software doesn't give you the capability, it has built-in Lua scripting, so you can script it yourself. You do Lua, all right. Yes. Um, one more thing. Uh, this is going to be in browns, uh, blues, and reds. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, uh, right out of the gate, it will be in July in reds, and then um, in August, it will be in bla uh, browns and blues. Talk about so many colors. That's the switch type, everybody. So yes. Not the yes. actual color scheme. That's no. the switch type. Yes. Multiple colors, yes. I saw the... Uh, um, like a firmware type thing on the back yes. is that going to be in the production so yes the the firmware switch will be there um so you know a lot of times if anything does happen to your keyboard and you have to do a hardwire firmware reset will give that programmability you know similar to um, a, a cd-rom drive where you have to pop it off manually you'll yeah. be able to reset the firmware to factory firmware because there's onboard memory and it's stored there so then you'll be able to just reload the software and update the firmware again so it will cut down on uh, the rma rates of, uh, of keyboards in general nice so you guys will see these in about a month or so then yes uh, they will be uh, very soon cool thanks a lot man yes.